Hey beer geeks, I've just completed an epic blind taste test of the 20 best bottled bitters from Britain and these are my best of the best. You want to see them, don't you? You want to see them, but you're going to have to watch to the end of the video or possibly just rewind right to the end. But you shouldn't do that because we have lots of fun along the way. We learn lots of things. Maybe we kill some kings along the way. And of course, we have some absolutely wacky tasting notes coming from an increasingly drunk Johnny. Banoffee. Menthol. It smells like spilt beer, if that makes any sense. Pan a raisin, but while someone sat next to you painting their nails. Now I know this is the style that's much maligned and been much left alone and behind by the craft beer movement, but there are some absolutely stellar beers in here. And of course on cast, these beers are absolutely stunning. So if you want to know what you should be picking up when you come to the UK and want to enjoy a cask beer, or if you've fallen out, with love, out of love with cask and you want to get back into it, this is going to teach you the best beers for doing that. Stay tuned. This is the Beer Expert with another blind taste test. So Big Eeks, welcome to the best of the best. I have got 20 best bitters to work my way through. I did again buy these beers, but I do not know the order that they're being poured in. And we're gonna use the same system that we've used for all of our other blind taste tests. So we're gonna be starting by rating the aroma out of 10, and then the palate out of 10, which also includes the texture of the beer, and then out of 10, also the aftertaste. So how it all hung together, and indeed how it finishes. So what are we looking for in a bottled best bitter. Well, this classic British style, which has been around for about 150 years, uh, should show a real balance between the hop and the malt and the yeast. So we're expecting some caramel flavours, some honey, some bread, some toast, some caramel, um, all these lovely kind of multi characters, but we're also expecting to get some hops. I will not like beers that have no bitterness, it's a bitter, but I will also mark down ones that are too hoppy, verging on kind of pale ale category. In terms of the yeast, we should be getting lots of expressive stone fruity, peachy, um, bready, maybe even tiny hints of banana and stuff like that, but very, very muted. We just want a really lovely fruity yeast character that's going to add complexity to this. And then the aftertaste should be bitter sweet. Now, I've said this many times on the channel, I'm not a huge fan of bottled best bitters. Cask is always the best format. So once I've worked out which my favourite are in bottle, I'm 100% going to be going out and finding them on cask. Let's do this. Right, first beer, let's see what we've got to open with. So, looks like a best bitter, not a lot of head retention there, but I have been waffling for a bit. Uh, and it's copper coloured. I'm expecting pretty much all these beers to be copper coloured. There might be some blonde ones in there as well. Mmm. Sounds pretty good. Raisiny, toasty, raisin, yeah, raisin bread. Little hints of kind of almost licorice. A little bit buttery as well. Not meh. Maybe a hint of diastyl, but it's okay. It really works within the context of, of the rest of the aroma. It's nice. Maybe a little bit less malt than I was hoping for, but a nice balanced bitterness, some nice caramel coming on the finish. A little bit fruity, nice little character from the yeast there, a little bit bready. Uh, that's a really lovely bitter. Mmm. Strong start. They haven't tried to trip me up right at the beginning. So, aroma, that's um, that's good. That's an eight. Uh, palette, a little bit lacking in body. Um, not quite as nice as the aroma. Seven. Aftertaste was, was really nice as well. Okay, beer number two. Looks identical. Hmm. Tiny bit green apple-y. Yeah, maybe a little hint of, of acetaldehyde on that, but... Still smells pretty nice. Still, if I got that on cask, I'd be like, yeah, this is in decent enough, Nick. Oh, um, way, way thinner than the first one. See, the aroma was a, a six, some flaws. The palette was almost non-existent. It just vaguely reminds me of toast. Um, aftertaste, there's no real bitterness, just almost a little bit of kind of roasted malt acidity to it. Not, not great. Oh, that's nice and bready. Some kind of hedgerow fruits off of that as well. So a little bit more hoppy, maybe. Yeah, definitely kind of lemon characteristic there as well. Really nice, fresh smelling bitter. Cheers. Lots of lovely body, soft caramel, the driest of the three beers, probably. It's lacking a bit of bitterness and it's lacking a bit of depth. Um, but it's in sort of, it's texturally, it's beautiful and had a really lovely aroma. 
Hmm. Almost a slight American hop aroma on that one. Definite real citrus coming through. Yeah, and that's pretty nice, but it feels more like like an American amber or something. It's got a nice malty aroma underneath those hops, but there's not a lot of malt character to it. Feels like a very clean yeast has been used, so there's just not a huge amount of depth to that. One round down, four to go. Okay, round two. Marked that one of them has immediately lost its head, the other three have kept them. It's a copper-coloured amber beer. Muddy, a little bit meaty. Some caramel, a little bit fruity apple. Doesn't smell great. It smells like spilt beer, if that makes any sense. Just old spilt sticky beer. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit caramelly, but there's just, there's just nothing to that beer. Very wit, just slight caramel sweetness. Right, beer number two, let's hope it's better. Looks identical. Okay, that's the same as the last one, but we've added banoffee. So isoamyl acetate, banana, the flavour you get in vice beer, is there in spades. Smells like banoffee pie. Kind of appealing, definitely not right. Particularly because that really clashes with the slightly roasty, toasty kind of thing. Oh, quite astringent. Yikes. Beer number three. Oh, a lot paler. Here we go. We've actually got a variation in colour. So much more pale. Kind of zesty orange on that. Yeah, a little bit orange peely, a little bit honeyed. It just smells really fresh. Marmalade, marmalade, it's marmalade. That's what I'm smelling, it smells like marmalade. Oh, beautiful body. Lovely sweetness, but the sweetness kind of disappears and then you're left with, you know, because it's a pretty well hopped beer, I think, quite a lot of kind of hop character. So really, really nice, right at the edges of what I'd call, call a bitter. I'm just gonna, like it's eight across the board, but I'm gonna knock one off just because there is just a little hint of astringency that comes with that higher hopping rate. Marmalade on toast, you know, that's the kind of tasting note I want uh, from a more kind of hoppy bitter. Raisin bread, toasty, are what I want from the other ones, and these are the two with the top scores so far. Oh, hello. What? Menthol. <sighs> Menthol and caramel. Not two flavours that have ever gone together. For pretty good reason. Doesn't smell good. Okay, thankfully, well, it's going to score well on the palate. It's got a nice body to it. It did have sweetness and hoppiness and bitterness. But just as I was about to say that, the astringency kicked in and it's not great. So we've had the best and the worst beer in that category. Okay, round three, nice set of heads up here. Nice copper colour. Don't know why I keep telling you guys. Woo, there's a lot going on in there. It's like a... Classroom without a teacher. Lots going on, nothing that should be. Um, diacetyl? Possibly some DMS? No I see aldehyde though, well done. Uh, yeah, gnarly. <sighs> I mean there's some caramel, that, that's the only positive I can pull from that. And the caramel comes through, it's weirdly alright, it's, it's overly dry. There's zero hot character, there's almost zero bitterness, just a little powderiness. Just a very nothingy beer. I don't know why these beers get released from breweries. Why, why is sensory, not even sensory, just somebody picking up a shift beer and going, well, that's not right. Um, right, Diac, Caramel. Ugh. Wow, okay. Very doughy. Sounds like a like a, a, a pan of raisin. Really spicy and raisiny and caramelly. What a gorgeous aroma. Oh, okay. Yeah, I reckon that's Harvey's. You've got, yeah, you've got a really buttery, doughy kind of character to it, 
but also it's it's got lots and lots of lovely hedgerow fruits. A uh, nice mix of hop. There is hot bitterness there. There is lots of malt body. It's got tiny little bubbles. It's very nice. It's a very nice beer. The aroma's not a style. It smells like a bakery in France, but it's very, very tasty. Um, so it can't be the best aroma because it's not quite a style. So it's going to have a seven, but the palate and the aftertaste are eights. Just, just lovely. I mean, if that's not Harvey's, then great. There's, there's two, two beers like that out there. Just utterly unique. Well, actually, <laughs> that smells quite similar. Maybe there are two beers out there. Yeah, similar aroma, but also some more classic kind of um, figgy, datey, caramelly, you know, like sticky treats kind of vibes to it. Yeah, that's a really nice beer. Um, well, there is a little bit of astringency coming through, but it's got hedgerow vibes. It's got caramel and biscuit kind of character. That's pretty nice. As I say in all these tastings, if you hit 20, that's a decent beer. That's a beer I'd go back for uh, at the bar. So we've had quite a few of those actually. We're doing all right. Yeah, so that's that's got a classic British bitter aroma. That That's exactly what I think of. Bready, caramelly, little hints of hedgerow fruit. So I'm talking like, like blackberry, earthy blackberry, not quite ripe blackberry kind of vibes. Smells nice. That's a beer that I bet is pretty good on cask because it smelt really malty, but then it just died away. Whereas with cask where you'd have lower carbonation, you wouldn't have like the carbonic bite. Um, the sweetness would be enhanced. The hops might be brought down a little bit. That would be a really nice beer, but just in bottle, it just feels a little bit thin. So round number four, it's nice to get to round number four and not feel really drunk like I did in the Belgian video or really bored like I did in the low alcohol one. Hmm. One day I will nail down this aroma I guess it's probably autolysis. It is slightly marmite earthy. I think it's just when you're using British hops, it can get a bit gnarly quite quickly. But th this is a yeast issue. It's just a little bit meaty. Yeah, and that, that just sort of spoils the whole thing. It's kind of earthy and meaty, which means nothing else really gets a look in. So it's five there. I mean, the palate was all right, but the flavor just wasn't there. And the aftertaste is just slightly bitter earth. Okay, and that's got a slight Belgian character to it. Definite, clovey, green apple-y, nail polish-y. So another fermentation issue or characteristic. The brewer would probably argue it's the latter, I'd argue it's the former, and it dominates the whole beer. Just died on the palate. So I had all this nail polish, green apple, bits of caramel, and they're just nothing. Yeah, really blonde. So you're getting, I think, because the other blonde beer was also kind of citrusy. And I think that you you allow that citrus from British hops to really shine if you use less malt character. It just, you take away somewhere else and you get more of something else. They always got American hops in, but it smells nice and citrusy. Not marmalade properly citrusy. The more I sniff it, I'm thinking there's American hops in here. Which is not to style, but it smells great. It smells really great. It smells like an American pale ale. Don't know how I'm going to mark that. Yeah, I mean that, that's an American pale ale. Um, definite citric, pine, resin, grapefruity kind of character. No real malt to it. Well, no real malt depth. It's got that biscuity, bright kind of character to it. Not a huge amount of yeast character, maybe a little bit of something going on, a little bit stone fruity. If that was in the American pale ale category, it would get sevens or eights across the board. Final one, definitely not an American pale ale. Ooh, that might be the darkest. That's ruby, that is a red beer. And that is not easy to get in beer, actually. Lots of raisin, but, mm. again, some nail polish. So a nice raisiny, you know, raisin bread kind of character. Do you remember raisin bread? It came in a red package, it was made by Submade. It was delicious stuff, put butter on it, you're living. Um, smells like that but while someone sat next to you painting their nails. It's still all right. That one threatens to die off, just like the other nail polish beer. What? Which one was that? There was this one. Oh, very similar color. Um, 
threatens to die off. Okay, <laughs> I just realised what this beer is. It's one of the knockoffs. <laughs> so um, one of these is Hobgoblin, and one of them is the Hobgoblin knockoff from Aldi. Um, it's better. This one's better. This one's better. I don't know whether I hope it's the Hobgoblin or the Aldi knockoff, but this one's better because it's got a little bit of depth. It's got more raisin malt character, and it's got a little bit of bitterness to it as well. Okay, so final round. I'm going to miss this test when it's over. I've had a lot of fun. I've had some really quite good beers, and I haven't... I thought this was going to be a bit of a shit show, to be honest. So that's got a slight element of that meaty character again uh, that I was talking about in the last round. But it does also have caramel and biscuity kind of character. I think maybe that aroma I'm looking for is where a little bit of autolysis meets, you know, earthy British hops, and it creates this kind of character that you only ever get in British ales because you only ever have those two things together in these styles. It smells okay, the caramel's saving it. It's a decent beer. I, I'd want it slightly more dialed in, slightly more yeast fruity and malt fruity aroma. But actually, once you're drinking it, it's, it's pretty good. Too safe, really, just felt a bit safe. Clove, uh, clovey, it's clovey. So it's phenolic. Not nail polishy. There's a cloviness to it. Slight Belgian character. Mingled in with, yeah, like generic spice, caramel, bread. People use this as a criticism. I do not. Twiggy. Just some, something pastoral about it. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, it's quite a light bit. I'd imagine this is quite low ABV and quite dry. But it's got lots of yeast character coming through. A little bit fruity, very spicy. Slightly tannic and bitter. It's hard to decide whether I whether I really like it or whether it's flawed. That might be a giant killer. That might be like something that's really famous and well known that I haven't loved, but it's still very tasty. That's quite nice. It's it's marmalade. -y. Marmalade on toast or croissant. It smells really nice. A really nice body to it as well and sweetness. That was so close to becoming a very high scoring beer, but there is. Not a hint of hop. Not a hint of hop to that. I'm like trying to squeeze bitterness out. And there's none. And you need it because that's quite an unsatisfying finish. Very disappointing. Uh, right, final beer. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for coming with me on this adventure. I hope we're going out on a high. Okay, there's that slight meaty character again. But it's accompanied by nice honey and biscuit aromas. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty decent smelling beer. Maybe it's past its best or something, because, yeah, it's just a little bit fusty. Lovely character from the yeast. A really kind of... A really kind of brioche sweet, bready kind of character to it. Decent bit of hop character as well. But yeah, it's kind of honeyed and smells sweet and feels like it should be sweet, but then it's bitter and it finishes nicely. So it is, I guess, the definition of bittersweet. And there endeth the lesson. So I've tried 20 best bitters from Bottle. More best bitters than I've probably drunk in the last couple of years of my life. I've been super impressed by some of these beers. These breweries, you know, they get a lot of hate uh, for being twiggy, for being safe, for being boring. But actually, huge variation on show. Lots of daring <laughs> use of yeast and fermentations. For the best sometimes, definitely not for others. But very, very interesting. And I have, other than thinking that that one was Harvey's and potentially knowing one of them was Hobgoblin because another one was identical, I have no real idea what any of these beers were. So it's going to be really interesting to see how these stack up to so stick around. Right, this is about as dangerous as beer blogging gets as I put 20 pairs bitters on the, <laughs> on the same table as my laptop. Uh, while filming. Um, but this is all the beers and in the order that they were poured, starting here and finishing whoop, round there. Uh, I'm going to reveal the column that was written that tells me the order. Unhide columns. There we go. Oh, we started with London Pride. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm so nervous about this because we have good relationships with lots of the breweries involved here. Um, right. Let's sort it by score. So the top four are so darn predictable. That's a bit, it's a bit disappointing, to be honest. I didn't want the top four to be really predictable. I wanted, always with these things, I want to discover something new. But basically, London Pride, to Muscle Tribute, Harvey's, and Timmy Taylor's came top. If we go one tier down, we get to the ones that got 21, which is, again, a great score. Bath Gem, Banks. Okay. 
Okay, Banks, there we go. That's great to see. And um, Badger, Thirsty Ferret, which pff, I don't remember ever drinking before. I definitely have, but I don't remember it. That's a super decent beer. That's a super decent beer. What did I say? No fit. I disagree with, with former Johnny. I disagree. That's got finish. Good old boy. I don't even know who made that. Who made good old boy? Uh, and now I've changed the order. I don't know. Good old boy. There we go. Okay. Renegade best. Okay, so Renegade. Sure. Uh, decent brewery. Um, I should say all of these came from the supermarket with the one exception of Harvey's, wherever you are, uh, which was, was gifted to me. Everything else came from one of the supermarkets, Aldi, Waitrose, Sainsbury's or Tesco. So these are all super available in the UK. Um, I mean, compared, compared to my new favorite Thirsty, thirsty Ferret, that's not, that's not all that great. It's interesting, once you have the context, just your palate completely changes. I had a beer that I didn't love that had clovey character. Yes, yeah, so that's the one that I was worried was gonna be a giant killer, and it kind of is. I mean, 20, 20 is a score I said, I'd go back to the bar for it. Uh, that was the one with clove. Uh, we know that there is a, a kind of slightly Belgian character to one of the strains in the Adam's Yeast from the wonderful video we made if you watch it up here. Um, I know it's super uncool to say as a big geek, but that's not my favourite beer from Adam's by a long way. It's a lovely beer, uh, and I know the brewers love it, but yeah, actually that that probably that tracks with, with my, my love of that beer. Um, right, let's look at these American ones. So Purity was one. Are they going to tell me what hops are in there? They're not gonna tell me what hops are in there, but it's called an amber ale. A lot of these beers are called amber ales now. Bitter is not, in fact, almost all of them. What have we got? Outstanding ale from Fuller's. Sure, you tell telling yourselves that? Well, actually, yeah, you came top. Uh, Doombar, amber, am ah, right, yes, well. So they're called amber ales because apparently amber is more, more sexy, more tasty than calling something bitter. I think that's American hopped. Uh, and the other American hopped one, I clocked it when I walked in. Even says the American, yeah, there you go, Mount Hood from JHB. So that's got American hops in as well, which is why it had a really citrusy character to it. Yes, so these two are, this is the Aldi knockoff. This is the real thing. Dubar came near the bottom. Oh, actually, and the knockoff came bottom. So this was the astringent Bonoffi pie. That was gnarly. Uh, this one came pretty low. I mean, Dubar's an interesting case. The best selling beer in the UK, this. Uh, best selling car scale, let's go with that. And that's because it's so damn close to lager, okay? It's, a, it's an amber lager for all intents and purposes because there's no yeast carry to it. There's not a lot of malt carry to it. It's like a macro lager on cask. Um, so that does not surprise me. Uh, what is surprising, which I clocked, is the ruby. The ruby did beat the hobgoblin. The hobgoblin came nearly bottom, which also tracks with my feelings about hobgoblin. But it's knockoff, available from Aldi, presumably much cheaper, uh, was better. It was better. That's an all right beer. That's an all right beer. Ah, I mean, that's all right now I'm drinking from the bottle. Something about drinking from the bottle. So what have we learned from this? Well, we've learned that London Pride, Pride's St. Austell Tribute and Harvey's are my favourite bitters and probably yours. Um, they are three of the best selling, sorry, no, two of them are two of the best selling in, in Pride and St. Austell Tribute. Harvey's doesn't sell that incredibly well, but it's quite a unique beer. This is my favourite beer of the lot. Or if you'd asked me before this taste test, I'd have said this is my favourite. And it probably still would be, but in terms of going to style for bitter, which is where judging gets complicated. It's not the best bitter. It's the best beer, but it's not the best bitter. It's not the best example of bitter. And I try to balance that in what I do here, like this idea of judging to style slash judging by what's the best beer. And that's, you know, that's why that's why it came, well, it did come top, um, but, you know, I have marked it down for, for the aroma, which is the unique and exciting thing about this beer. But basically, if you want an absolutely classic British best bitter, Pride is the one to go for. If you like your bitters a little bit blonder, then it's absolutely tribute. And if you want something with a bit more complexity, a little bit more unique character, then you should go for Harvey's. I think that's a good lesson. I've been the beer expert. You can watch all my other blind taste tests up here, but I am going for a lie down and probably a pork pie, I reckon. Yeah.
Sport.